I will not live a lie. Before the fears of living a lie and losing my job were more than I could handle. Right now, as a human being within myself, I'm completely at rest. I wrote the letter because I feel I have the right to stay in the Air Force, to do my job well, and not be afraid that my private life will destroy me. But how could an admitted homosexual find any acceptance in the military community? Well, I feel I could have greater acceptance now. I could be an example of equal opportunity in the Air Force. Others would see that if they came forward as I have, they would have nothing to fear. Thank you. Sergeant Matlovich, if you are retained in the Air Force, do you see yourself as a uh, pioneer, bringing these hundreds of others out of the closet? Well, I don't feel that anyone should live in the closet. But I do not see myself as a pioneer. I want to stay in the Air Force, but not for the publicity. I'd sign a contract right now, never to make another public statement. Will you sign a contract not to commit homosexual acts from this day forward? No, I would not. I'm homosexual. That would be asking me to be celibate for the rest of my life. Are you telling me you're going to continue committing a felony offense under the law? Sir, heterosexuals commit felony offenses. Sexual crimes against the same uniform code of military justice, the same Air Force regulations. Why should they be exempt from a law which I have to obey? Why am I different? No further questions. Colonel Applegate, please proceed with your final summation. To preserve its organizational dignity, the United States Air Force has a right to make its regulations and to enforce its regulations. Certain standards must be maintained. Anything goes may be acceptable to consenting civilians, but it is not acceptable in the United States Air Force. I ask you, gentlemen, please don't mistake the relaxing of standards or the ignoring of standards as an index of your tolerance or of your humanity or of your concern for Sergeant Matlovich. Don't do that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Adelstone? Yes, sir. Uh, gentlemen, Sergeant Matlovich is not a homosexual. He's a human being. He must be retained in the Air Force since his ability to serve has not been compromised. And if he is an exception, now, certainly, no case has been made to show that his ability to serve is compromised. On the contrary, you have heard the unvarying praise of his colleagues. You have in evidence 1,500 student critiques, 93% giving Matt the highest possible rating. So his ability to serve is unquestioned and uncompromised. Now, is Matt an exception? What makes an exception? Twelve years of unblemished and distinguished service to his country in peace and war. A dedication and a devotion to the Air Force and to this country, which in 1975 seems quite unique, exceptional even. Now, the regulations do not give us a clear definition. So, we are asking you for the answer. I think you will answer affirmatively, not only for the sake of Sergeant Matlovich, but in the best interests of your service, your country, and the concept of equal justice for all. Thank you. If there are no other matters, the voting members of this board are asked to retire for deliberation. This hearing is adjourned until such time as the voting members have reached a finding and a recommendation.
Now the hard part. Waiting. I've waited 30 years. I can wait another few hours. President, has the board made a finding? We have. Are these findings concurred in by a majority of members? Yes. And what is that finding? The board finds that Technical Sergeant Leonard P. Matlovich has violated Section H, AFM 3912, by engaging in one or more homosexual acts. The board therefore unanimously recommends that said Sergeant Matlovich be discharged with a general, that is a less than honorable, discharge. And this hearing is closed. A complaint for injunctive, declaratory, and mandatory relief was filed in the U.S. District Court of the District of Columbia. On July 16, 1976, the presiding judge ruled against Sergeant Matlovich, but added, the time has arrived when the armed forces need to reappraise the problem which homosexuality presents in the military context. Public attitudes are clearly changing. The armed forces have shown they can lead the way on matters of discrimination, and I suggest this is an area that deserves its more intense and immediate study. Ed Asner. They've got millions to spend. Even if you win, you might well win nothing. Daniel J. Travanti. You've been hoping to prove that these statements about Corcoran were produced carelessly for carelessness about another man's reputation amounts to malice, and malice is an important factor in a case of this kind, isn't it? The malice is in the man. Asner, Travanti, two of television's most acclaimed Mr. stars. In a powerful drama based on Louis Neiser's best-selling autobiography, A Case of Libel. If you believe that this is a state and a country where every man is a king, but no man wears a crown, then I want you to vote for Huey Long. For the United States. Louisiana, 1932. A time of bread lines and soup kitchens. When people reached out for hope. In the name of Huey Long. He established his reputation as a defender of the poor. And spokesman against big business. Why we for slumber, America? Land of brave and free. With palaces and clothing and food for all. All belongs to you! The South had never seen the likes of one such colorful politician. Never write what you can phone, never phone what you can talk head in the head, never talk what you can nod, never nod what you can wink, never wink what you can look. That's rule number two. What's number one? Never question the kingfish. His aspirations led to the White House, but an assassin's bullet ended that dream. Oh, Roosevelt thinks I'm one of the two most dangerous men in the country. The other being Douglas MacArthur. I resent the company more than the allegation. Huey. Yes. Hi. 
Edward Asner stars as the late United States Senator Huey Long in the life and assassination of the Kingfish. All right, niggers, unload. Decatur, Alabama, 1931. It started with a freight train rumble. What happened on that train, girl? A few hastily spoken words. We is both raped by them. That launched one of the most embittered court battles the South had ever seen. Then one of them said, Girl, I'm going to give you a black baby. Eight black men on trial for their lives, judged by an all-white jury, victims of the Deep South's own brand of justice. I was framed in Scottsboro. With Dallas's Ken Kirchival. Alabama justice cannot be bought and sold with Jew money from New York. Arthur Hill stars as the courageous judge whose compassion cost him his career. Judge Horton and the Scottsboro Boys. It was the mid-1920s when the appearance of a woman flashed across the consciousness of millions, successfully competing for headlines with bootleggers, flagpole centers, sports figures, and the glittering personalities of Hollywood's silent era. She inspired the most impassionate belief and became known worldwide as Sister Amy. I was blindfolded and taken outside. They threw me into the back of an auto, bound and gagged, and we began to drive. They put a blanket over me so I couldn't see where we were going. I heard another machine following us. Finally, the auto stopped. They took me into an old adobe shack, dirty, with one poor room. Two days later, Steve came back and demanded again I write a letter to you. When I refused, they cut off two locks of hair from my head. But if that doesn't convince her, we'll cut off your finger and we'll send that to her. In 1926, evangelist Amy Semple McPherson mysteriously disappeared from the beach in Venice, California. Her claim to have been kidnapped left police officials skeptical and suspicious. There have been persistent rumors about your relationship with Kenneth Ormiston. Witnesses claim that they saw you with him in Salinas, in San Luis Obispo, riding with him in a blue Chrysler Coupe near Santa Barbara. Now, all this, supposedly, during the time you were missing. Mr. Ryan, since I was bound hand and foot in a Mexican desert, I obviously wasn't joyriding with Mr. Ormiston in Santa Barbara or anywhere else. While others had doubts, her congregation remained loyal. Betty Davis. Were you with Robinson? Answer me. Were you with Robinson? And Faye Dunaway star. They're setting you up, Amy. To pull you down. Well, let them try. Let them. My people will believe me. I'll win. A fascinating true story of religion, suspense, and love. The disappearance of Amy.